Hello everyone. In this module, we will be discussing about bacteriological examination of water for detection, determination and confirmation of Escherichia coli. Like we discussed in the last module, many illnesses stem from waterborne bacteria making water testing crucial for preventing such diseases. Water quality testing often uses indicator organisms which signals potential contamination. Coliforms are a key group used in these tests. They are gram-negative non-spore forming rods that ferment lectose to produce acid and gas within 48 hours and are commonly found in soil and plants. Their presence does not necessarily indicate unsafe water. Fecal coliforms or thermotolerant coliforms originate from mammalian intestine and can grow in bile salts. They produce acid and gas at 44 degrees Celsius within 48 hours and their presence in water suggests contamination making the water unsafe for consumption. E. coli is a type of fecal coliform detected using selective and differential media to indicate possible fecal contamination. There are so many articles coming up every day related to untreated water samples. If we consume such untreated water, we can have different diseases. We can come up with different diseases. So it is very crucial to treat these water samples or the water that we are consuming every day. Now, there are two methods that can be used for detecting and enumerating coliforms and fecal coliforms in water samples. They are most probable number and membrane filtration. I'll be starting with most probable number or it is also called as MPN test. Now, what is MPN test? The MPN test is a statistical method which is based on the random distribution of microorganisms in a sample. This involves adding measured volumes of water to tubes with a liquid indicator growth medium. Tubes showing growth and color change indicate the presence of bacteria while those without bacteria remain unchanged. The MPN of indicator organism is estimated using statistical tables based on the distribution of positive and negative reactions. The MPN test consists of three steps. First is presumptive test, second confirmed test and the third and the last one is completed test. In the presumptive test, measured amounts of water are added to fermentation tubes with McConkie lactose broth and Durham tubes to detect the gas production. Coliforms bacteria ferment lactose causing a color change in the presence of pH indicator dye. For the confirmed test, a loop full of growth from a presumptive positive tube is transferred to a tube of brilliant green lactose bile broth that is BGLB and incubated. The medium contains lactose and selective agents with positive tubes indicating gas production. Endo agar plates are then streaked with growth for, from positive tubes to identify typical coliform colonies. In the completed test, further the completed test further verifies positive results. A coliform colony from the endo agar plate is inoculated into brilliant green bile broth and nutrient agar. After incubation, gas production and gram staining confirm the presence of gram negative non spore forming rods indicating the coliforms in the water sample. Now, this is the overview of MPN test in which presumptive test is there where we inoculate the organism or the water sample in the lactose broth. If we get to see gas production then we can say that presumptive test is positive for coliforms if there is no gas production then we can conclude that there is no presence or the absence of coliforms further if uh, we are getting positive test then we can go for confirmed test in confirmed test the sample is uh, taken out from the positive tubes and inoculated in bglb and EMBA simultaneously. Then last is the completed test wherein 
the most typical colonies are selected from EMB plate and they are again inoculated in lactose broth for gas production to check for the gas production and gram staining is done for the confirmation of coliforms. Now I will be giving a bit information about presumptive test. So in the presumptive test a series of lactose broth tubes are inoculated with measured amount of the water sample to be tested. The series of tubes may consist of 3 or 4 groups of 3, 5 or more tubes. The more tubes utilize the more sensitive the test. Gas production in any of the tubes is presumptive evidence of the presence of coliforms. The most probable number of coliforms in 100 ml of water sample can be estimated by number of positive tubes. So this is the table that we can refer to for understanding whether the sample is contaminated with coliform. So using this table or referring to this table you can conclude that whether the water sample that uh, you have taken is of which grade whether it is of excellent satisfactory suspicious or unsatisfactory grade. Now moving towards confirmed test, if any of the tubes inoculated with the water sample produce gas, the water is presumed to be unsafe. However, it is possible that the formation of gas may not be due to presence of coliforms. In order to confirm the presence of coliforms, it is necessary to inoculate EMB agar plates from a pro positive presumptive tube. The Methylene blue in EMB agar inhibits gram positive organisms and allow the gram negative coliforms to grow. Coliforms produce colonies with dark centers, E. coli and E. aerogens can be distinguished from one another by the size and color of the colonies. E. coli colonies are small and have a green metallic sheen whereas E. aerogens forms large pinkish colonies. If only E. coli or if both E. coli and E aerogenes appear on the EMB plate, the test is considered positive. If any E aerogenes appears on the EMB plate, the test is considered negative. The reason for these interpretations are that as previously stated, E. coli is an indicator of fecal contamination since it is not normally found in water or soil, whereas E aerogenes is widely distributed in nature outside of the intestinal tract. Now, if we get positive test for presumptive test as well presumptive and confirmed test we can go ahead with completed test so the complete test is made using the organism which grew on the confirmed test media these organisms are used to inoculate a nutrient agar slant and a tube of lactose broth after 24 hours at 37 degrees celsius the lactose broth is checked for the production of gas and a gram stain is made from organism on the nutrient agar slant. If the organism is a gram negative non spore forming rod and produces gas in the lactose tube, then it is the positive. It then it is positive that uh, coliforms are present in the water sample. These are the references. Thank you.